Hi, and welcome to today's Glamour World. I'm your host, Allie B, and we're here at the beautiful Vacaville Public Access studio, and I'm here with a very special guest, a fashion designer out of San Francisco. I'm here with Carrie Asby. So I'm here. Carrie, how are you doing today? Great. I'm so glad that you came on the show. We're going to have a, a good time. You get to talk about some of your stuff. So tell me what we all know that you're a fashion designer, but what would you describe as, what is your, your look? What, what is your style? Tell us a little bit about yourself creatively. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, so all my pieces are one of a kind. Mm -hmm. So I would have to say the Subtle Arkin style is more about individuality. Okay. So each piece is a one of a kind. It's they're on the artistic kind of flair, so um, it's for the individual that's looking for the expression and to have a really creative, unique look. Right, so you have to be into the edgy and, and maybe the spontaneous and just something that's very unique. Yeah, right? yeah, and so. have a little confidence because you're going to get a lot of attention. <laughs> you need a lot of confidence, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you, you mentioned your company, Sutter Larkins, which is out of San Francisco. Where did that name come, come from and how does that name describe you as a fashion designer? I always wanted to do clothing design mm -hmm. ever since I was a little girl. Um, and I'm from Portland, Oregon, oh, originally. Okay. okay. And Portland. <laughs> so when I was 18, mm -hmm. I actually came to San Francisco for the first time. Oh, okay. And I lived on the corner of Sutter and Larkin, which is um, in the Tenderloin, and it's a pretty rough neighborhood. And okay. it's um, it was a big step for a young girl just out of basically the home for the first time. Right. And I was very isolated, I was very, uh, I was miserable, so I left, mm -hmm. um, but the universe liked me in San Francisco and brought me back about 20 years ago, yeah. I, I'm sorry, 20 years later, okay. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, and I was at a cocktail party, a birthday mm -hmm. party, um, and I was just designing clothes just for myself mm -hmm. and for some of my friends, and people at this party had some of my stuff on and this woman had gotten word that my designs were on out and about. Right. She beelined it up to me and just wanted to know all about my clothes and where, you know, what boutique she could find them in and she actually wow. thought I was a designer. Oh wow. And that just happened to be on the corner of Sutter and Larkin where I lived when I was eighteen. Interesting. So I was like, wow, that dream I had when a little girl that I'd shoved way down way below, down, yeah. it also went <laughs> <laughs> And wow. I took it as a sign that I should wow. give it a go again. So Southern Larkin is where I was just kind of failed and then where it was re-blossomed. Right. So it's, it's like you had, a, you had a rough start, but then you, it's like you rediscovered yourself there at the very same spot. Exactly. That is so interesting. So that... Yeah. That's what inspired me to go into wow. fashion again. And so you mentioned that you've always been interested into fashion design as a young girl. So did that, was that how you got started? I mean, did you enter your adult life just going into fashion design or did your career segue at some point somewhere else and then you brought you back to fashion design or? Well, when I was 18 and I knew, I basically called my parents and said, come get me, I wanna come home. So I went up to Portland. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a design thinker naturally, mm -hmm. so I went into design thinking in advertising. Okay. So that's where I basically spent 20 years, um, you know, through high school or through college and after was in the advertising world. Okay. Um, so I could still do that design stuff. Right. But um, getting into fashion, it was that moment mm -hmm. when the woman mistaken me for being a fashion designer when all of a sudden it's like, you know what, that's a dream I've always wanted. You only live once. I right. gotta go for it. So right. I just dove right in, right then and there. Right. And uh, kind of give you that confidence, like, hey, you know, maybe I could do this if you have an audience that is willing to, you know, that is that is interested in what you do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your your designs and and your style was that something that was just unique to you? Were you influenced by by something else? How how would you how would you say your your creativeness works? Is it something that was just personal to you or? Well, I I definitely say my design is influenced by eclectic design mm -hmm. where I like to um, take different textures and different colors and put them together what you wouldn't think would go together and mm -hmm. I like to pull it off right. and I actually learned that from an architect. Oh wow. Um, uh, I used to live in Wyoming in Jackson Hole right. and he was my neighbor and his stuff was very eclectic. He mm -hmm. took different 
textures and different materials and different colors and if you were to kind of just put them on a pile on the floor that wouldn't work but he pulled mm -hmm. it off right. and it has a lot of personality uniqueness right. and so I've taken that kind of approach and applied it to my clothing. Oh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> so who would be the who would be the ideal the ideal excuse me male or female to wear one of your outfits what what are some of the characteristics that they would have to have would they have to be a spontaneous person that's just out of the box and, and you know carries that certain air about them to wear your style or or who would be the ideal person to, to wear? The ideal person I think would uh -huh. be someone who's a balanced person. Oh, okay. So someone that um, kind of knows who they are mm -hmm. and all the aspects of who they are mm -hmm. and celebrates each aspect mm -hmm. so they're not focused just on one thing. Um, in life and I think if you have a balanced life where you cherish all your individuality you want you're able to express that individuality right. and so I would say the person that's really seeking to comfortable with who they are and want to be who they are is is my the person that would wear my clothes the best oh, okay okay and with fashion design did you ever go to school perhaps for you for no. no no okay so this is all something that you you well, learned and yeah. you just my grandmother, my grandmother taught me how to sew, oh, okay. and so um, I know the, I know the basics. But um, yeah, it's kind of cute when like I have to make a pattern. Um, I'm winging it, yeah. <laughs> and it works. Yeah. So, you know, trial and error. You do try it one way, and right. it doesn't work, right. and you try another way until right. it finally works. So we have to thank your grandmother for some of the great designs that you have. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what age were you when you started sewing? Oh, we used to go back because my family's from Iowa. We used to yeah. go back. I think she started me sewing like when I was nine, ten years old. Wow. Cause she used to make a lot of my clothes and then it got to the point where I wanted to wor wow. work with her. So Nine and ten. And you have adults like myself who, who don't even know how to sew as of yet <laughs> and want to. That is so bad. But nine and ten is when you actually start and you right. said, yeah, creating your own stuff and perhaps maybe your own outfits and whatnot. Yes. Oh, I've wow. always been that way, definitely. Wow. So, so take us back to Sutter Larkin. So you told us the story about how it got its name, but how was it transitioning from advertising into fashion design? Now you're in the industry. Yes. You know, now you're, this is something that you're trying to pursue. How, how was that transition? Was it smooth? Did it have uh, a couple bumps? Well, definitely bumps. Yeah. But um, and at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I am a business owner. Right. And my creativity is my business. And so that was the same in advertising, because um, I, I was in and out of agencies. I had worked for people, and then I worked on my own. But right. it's still, I was a business owner, and my creativity was my business. Right. So I took a lot of that experience, and I could apply it to my new business, right. which is fashion. Right. Um, and that, that, was, that worked out. I think that was my advantage, considering I didn't have a formal background right. in fashion. Um, but it was, you know, I, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. And I have. And Can you tell us about one of your mistakes? I'm sure the viewers will want to know. What was one of your mistakes that you're willing to own up to? <laughs> oh, um, I, how do I say this diplomatically? I, <laughs> don't worry about the diplomatic. <laughs> we can just get right into No, it's, it's when you're first starting out and you, yeah. don't, you don't have your tribe established. You know, okay. you, just, you just work with people who, anyone who's willing to work with you because mm -hmm. no one, I don't have experience, I don't have the recognition, I don't have the the power, the name power yet, so it's, mm -hmm. please work with me. Um, and working with people who, who over-promise, under-deliver, completely unprofessional. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people an, an hour before a fashion show who promised me that they would have something finished the day before. Oh. They didn't have it done. I was furious, and mm -hmm. so instead of owning up to it, he basically took all my designs into the back room and locked the door. Oh. Um, and this was at a fashion show where you were supposed to be, you know, laying out some of your designs and he has all your stuff in the back room? Oh yeah, yeah. he had two of the outfits he was oh, supposed to help gosh. me produce. Uh, uh, but it was, you know, that was, it was traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been so angry in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out and mm -hmm. it was a great learning experience and now I know how important it is to surround yourself with the right people. Right. And, uh, and this, that's the, the core of the business, is right. the relationships. Right. And would you say that most of, because you mentioned the fashion show and some of the anxiety that comes along with it, what can be some of the most 
I mean, most anxiety filled moments. Is it the actual fashion show where it's the day of and you're you're trying to get, you know, prep to lay your designs out to your audience? Or would it be the business side of, of what you do? Which one kind of seems to be the I definitely the the most nervous you will find me mm -hmm. is when my first model is at a runway show and my mm -hmm. first model's about to walk. And the mouth goes dry the heart is a hundred miles an hour, you yeah. know, and I'm and I'm supposed to be the cool, calm, and collected one, and, right. and getting everyone out on time right. and looking great, and that is the most. That's showtime. It's live. Are they gonna like me? Right. <laughs> you know, are they gonna right. like my? You know, that's the most. I amped up. Um, the stressfulness of of the, is running the business because right. um, I would rather not. I'd rather be making things pretty. Right. <laughs> Doing what you do. The exactly. Stuff. And so having to sit down and do the invoicing and deal, you know, I have to deal with sales tax and cost of goods sold. And I'm just, that's not my, that's not the way my brain right. thinks. So that's the hardest part for me is right. the business aspect right. of it. So there's a, there's a lot that goes into being a fashion designer. Some people just think, hey, it's just designing the clothes, but no, it's actually your business as well, and and doing a lot of your promotion and, and this and that and, and doing all the, the background work that not a lot of people get to see. Yes. So I can imagine some of the stress that goes along with that. But let's talk about the 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 stuff that keeps you going. What is it about? that We heard about the stressful stuff. Let's get past that. What let's keeps you going? Yeah, let's talk about the good stuff now. <laughs> what keeps you going? What what? What allows you to say, hey, you know, this is what I'm in for. This is why I love fashion design. Def um, the relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who I design for or the people I work with. Um, it's just when it all comes together. Like mm -hmm. today I delivered um, a custom piece to a client of mine and his reaction was awesome. He was thrilled. And then he actually took the time later on the day to call me mm -hmm. and thank me. Oh. And said he loved his, his piece, but he loved the, the whole experience. Mm. And that is just the, the frosting right. on top. You know, right. so it's, it, yes, it is creating, but it's having the personal connection with someone and right. having a strong relationship. And right. if it's someone I work with or work for, it's just the quality relationship is right. what makes it really rewarding. Right. And so you've been passionate about this for, for a long time. So getting that gratitude back, you know, someone who <laughs> likes your work and appreciates all the work that you do, I can imagine is what keeps you, propels you to go forward. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Definitely the text messages, the emails, the notes, all those, hey, you're mm -hmm. doing great. Thank you. That is, right. that's everything to me right, right now. Right. Yeah. And, and how would you say, I mean, your, your designs are so, like you said, so unique. And I saw some of them, and we're going to put them up. I mean, they're so unique. They're, they're one of a kind, truly. And I, I don't mean that as a cliche. They are truly one of a kind, right? And, and just so unique, so, so different. Um, how, do, how do people usually react to your, to your designs? Um, what, what would you say is usually the reaction from them? Um, depends. Uh, I think either it's it's either you like it or you don't. Right. Um, and some people will just hold it up and say, "Wow, I love this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing." And then some people are kind of frightened because mm -hmm. it's like, um, "What do I do with it? Are you really someone's going to wear that?" <laughs> um, and yeah, it's I I never get a hmm mm -hmm. and you know pass it on. You, you're not one of the the fashion designs where it's kind of like, oh, "Okay, I can see this anywhere." It's it's either you're gonna hot or cold. You're either gonna like. Yep. or not. Yep. I like, I definitely like, <laughs> I mean, I, I do. And I truly believe, like I was telling you earlier that, you know, now it seems as though what is trending, I don't even know if I should even say that, but you know, it seems like a lot of people are looking for something unique. They, they want to set themselves apart. What used to be seen as abnormal is now what people are trying to gravitate to. Yeah. So do you find that you're, you're fitting in within today's market? Do you find that people are, are gravitating to your designs more? now than I mean is there has there been a pattern over the years I think so I yeah. think especially I mean I'm not obviously I'm on the west coast I have a better vibe on or my fingers on the pulse on the west coast but mm -hmm. I think um conscious consumerism people are more aware where the pieces are made and mm -hmm. what the product you know materials are and so they they know more about what they're buying and they they definitely want to have a connection Right. With the, the the people right. that um, who are buying it, so definitely um, 
individuality, unique, that, that I think people are seeking that out, right. definitely, right. Um, and especially in San Francisco. Yeah. And San Francisco is a great city. And since you mentioned San Francisco, and you also mentioned that you had your hand on the pulse of West Coast, what what made you choose San Francisco? We heard the, the story, of again, of your company. But what made you settle down in San Francisco and say, OK, I'm going to just you know, set my, my camp here opposed to New York or, or LA or, or some of the other areas? Um, I've always been attracted to San Francisco. And I think it's the history of the city where it's been people coming out west, having a dream and going for it. And you can see that with the, you know, the gold mining era all the way up from now for the tech industry where it's dreamers and doers and they're coming out here and living their dream mm -hmm. and it's a very supportive culture mm -hmm. and I before I moved down here I had established uh, a good group of friends who were very supportive and I just knew that if I it was San Francisco is the only city I could be in because right. these are the dreamers and these are the doers and these are the people that are wanting you to succeed right. And there's, it's you tell someone you have an idea, and they're they're wanting, what can I do to help? Right. So um, that's that's why I came down here. This is where my people are. Right. This, right. This that's where you like, find that com the community of support. Exactly. Right, yeah. Opposed to other places. Do you ever um, try and visit the other places to see what the market's like there, or have you just been based in San Francisco? Um, for the most part, for the most part, I have San Francisco, but I mean, I have mm -hmm. connections in Portland, so I have my clothes up there. Right. Um. I, I go to LA because um, I actually have a great photographer oh, down nice. there, um, and it's you know it's fun. It's just it's not it's not the same culture. Right. It's um, yes, I have a business and it's designing clothes, but it's more to life than just um, it, I have you know other aspects of my life. And right. LA is not my culture. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco is, is very special to a lot of people. Yeah. Very special just from. The, the locations, there's so many things to be inspired by. And, and talking about San Francisco, I heard that you did a shoot out there recently? Yeah, this on, past so, weekend. on Sunday, yeah. Oh. It, was, it was by far my best shoot so yeah. far, yeah. Wow. So tell us a little bit about it. So it was on, on Sunday, I heard that you guys went to various locations, but what was the first first um, thing that you guys did when you actually got there? We had, so we had three models, mm -hmm. um, and we had three changes for each. So the okay. first change, um, it was, and, oh, and so all these clothes that were, we were shooting um, were inspired, my influence was by Burning Man, mm -hmm. um, and having that culture influence these pieces. So it was all pieces that were, were for Burning Man. Right. So um, I wanted it to be really artistic, but, but because we were in the city, I wanted it to be kind of an edge. So we were just using street back, like buildings wow. as backgrounds. Yeah. And, um, so it, we had these clothes that were expressive and artsy and bright and colorful and furry and glittery right. up against uh, um, a gray wall. And it just, it just turned out really great, just yeah. the contrast and the colors. And, and that was the first shoot? Yeah, yeah, so, so sorry, yeah. So the yeah. first shoot was, um, it was just, we, had, we found this great wall with graffiti and, and we had this, these colors, like one gal, she had a, a green dress with lots of flowers, oh, wow. um, and, and she had this dark red hair. So just the contrast with right. the pink, her red, very her vibrant, very like yeah, very artistic. Very, oh, wow. um, and then Andrew, he had a, a piece on that um, again, green with red and purple and right. just boldness and cr and craziness. Right. Um, and then the other piece that we had on. Um, Rebecca, she had these, I found these lizard skin shorts that needed to be repurposed desperately. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're the woman for the job, and right? And so we just cranked it up on edginess and sexiness and yeah. rawness. And she, um, she held it. I mean, she owned that piece. And right. so she, she definitely was a strong woman in this very expressive piece and yeah. up against the wall. And it just, she pulled it off really great. Oh, wow. So Carrie, you, you mentioned about the different shoots and the, all the excitement that you had on, on Sunday in San Francisco. So, I mean, those, was that an exclusive thing? Were those the first, was that the first time that those designs were out or? A lot of them. Um, wow. It's a little bit of, there's a few pieces in there that um, have been on the runway mm -hmm. or 
and those, those are only like one or two, majority of the pieces in the shoot on Sunday, that was the first time they've ever been captured on film. Wow. Wow. So that was and also... We, we have the film. Yeah. So we're definitely going to show all of the <laughs> film of all, all this exclusive stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you would say about a majority of your stuff was first time out. All right. So you guys have heard Carrie talk about the different, uh, the different shoots that happened this past weekend and the different locations. So I want you guys to take a peek at the first video of the first location. Chris is the one who did like the uh, candy monster picture that was really awesome. Yeah, and he has. Hey, so this is Eve. We met at an awesome event a few months ago. Um, I like having her model for me because she has, she's gone through some tough times and she's pulled her shit together and she's a solid gal. And because of her experience, she's very grounded and she has a really good insight. And that's why I like working with her. <laughs> Aside that, she's absolutely stunning and beautiful and, and very professional. Thank you. Yes, and she's wearing um, a commission dress that um, actually a friend of mine had me made. It's a one of a kind, um, and it just has a lot of flowers on it, a lot of playfulness, and a lot of, uh, and it's comfortable, it's easy to wear, it really is. So <laughs> it's one of those, it's a sundress that you feel happy in and you feel good in. Hey. Close your eyes. And hold your breath. And hold your breath. Air <laughs> It's almost like a perfume. It smells good. It's not like a coconut. Okay, let's yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. how the shots are coming out so far. This is raw, coming right out of the camera. No retouching. Andrew? 
Um, I actually met him at Burning Man, um, but instantly we're good friends. Um, I like working with him because he's got a great attitude, he's smart, he's funny, he's sexy, he's just every everything that a woman wants. <laughs> and um, yeah, actually this is his outfit. He paid me to do this for him, and so we're using it for the shoot. Um, never been seen before um, on film, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm Andrew. I've lived in uh, San Francisco for a little while. I met Carrie about five years ago, and uh, just become amazing friends. And I've loved seeing her blossom and develop as a as a designer, and been really lucky to be a part of it. So, they're pretty fun. Sugar Show. She's an amazing model, very smart woman. She doesn't like hairspray, but that's okay. <laughs> the passion for fashion, you can breathe now. <laughs> but uh, I like her because she wants to change the world in political science. And I think there needs to be change, and I think she can do it. Hope so. Yes, <laughs> it is. Vincent, do you need to move the generator now? Okay. Oh, I think we're good. Is your hair okay? 
Is that okay? I mean, it's um, yeah. a milk. Oh, you're gonna have a problem with your sandwich? Oh, yeah. 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 Just, we're just doing bedhead. I'm Jason Henriksen, makeup artist. I worked with Carrie on a fashion show a few weeks ago. And lucky enough to join her today. Tell me what you're going for. I am giving her the dusted fly look. So a little bit of lightening her up, look at, like she's been out in the out in the desert for a while. So. All right. Then the next shoot, actually, there's this wall in San Francisco I found fascinating. It's just cement, and it has this same pattern, the square pattern, and in, and it's this from like four stories high, and it's just you walk by it every day and you wouldn't recognize it, but it became this amazing backdrop, and um, and th the pieces that I picked for that shoot, um, they all were um, on the little darker color wise mm -hmm. and so I think that changed their attitude a little bit and they got a little sultry and they kind of got a little sexier mm -hmm. um, the first one was a little more playful and this one was street raw edgy wow. um, and you could see it in the way they were carrying the clothes and yeah. then in the way they were um, right. having fun so let's go ahead and take a peek at the second location
didn't know that. Yes. Premiere, premiere. Yes.
know where the tea party is. I'm okay with the shadow. Yeah, because it's it's so um oopsie. Yeah, it actually adds a little dramatic. Because you can still see the detail in the clothes. <laughs> That's a great shot. Hi, ah, I love that one. Andrew, the ones of you spinning are awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, cool. Let's go and shave and shave. Can we go back up? Or? Oh, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. That better with shot. the arms up. I see. Yeah. yeah. Better with the arms up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. That's right. Those are great. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic model. Oh no, no. I'm just, you know, it's a. It, when these clothes are just fun to wear, I'm just like, hey, yeah, just dance are. around. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. so, should we call it a wrap in this location? Yeah. And then, so that alley down there, um, there's so much of what we wear in the other spot where it's like there's one wall that's all plain, there's another wall that's all purple, there's another wall that's all silver, and it's either side of the alley, so we can pick which background we want, sure. which lighting we want. Um, Perfect. So, Hey, Katie. Yeah. Well, actually, okay, so we have one more outfit for y'all. I think we're doing okay time-wise for you. Are we? Is it it's four to till one? Yeah, we're good. Okay, that so um, last outfits, um, you're going to wear it's a button top. Um, the sarong, there's red panties. I think actually the red panties that you wore at the Rasha. To oh, go okay. under, um, let's wear, do you have a nude color bra? I have black, white, and gel press. Let's wear the black bra okay. underneath it. And then you're wearing your the fur thing. The fur and the army pants. What are we wearing on top again? Yes, the vest. The furry vest. Oh, right, okay. So you, just for that. Yeah, okay, cool. you want to just wear the shirt down here and then it's time okay. to change. I'll, I am going to come up and get you guys yeah. changed, but yeah. um, I'm going to take these guys to the next location. Okay. So. And then. Yay! And that's, that's nine outfits in one day, you guys. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. As I so you like to diversify some of the feels that your clothes are presenting. Like you were saying that you have the street and edgy side, so you, you're you very diverse in, in your designs and, and what you want the audience to kind of get out of it or, what you're, you know, the people that you're you're designing for, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, it's, it's, it's all about a personality, right. a, a, an emotion that can be stirred from right. it. You know, some of my pieces can be very romantic and girly and feminine, right. or um, even a piece I just did for my boyfriend is Mad Max, Thunderdorm, yeah. edgy, raw, <laughs> just ah, yeah. but it just it it just puts you in that mode, yeah. you know. Did he it's like just, it? He Did loved he like, it. Yeah. <laughs> he has to love it, right? He's the boyfriend. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, what about the the third the third shoe? The third shoe, um, we I kind of I my I changed plan in the middle like middle of the game. I decided to do something different. So we found this alley, and. Um, which was perfect because each building had a complete different right. store for a different building right. so or colors and such and so um, each piece at this time they didn't they didn't really match there was it was kind of they there wasn't a theme so it worked out perfect I could put Andrew who had this almost it was the fur leggings and these camo shorts and this kind of woolly jacket um, he was more, it reminded me of some, something like from Shakespeare's Forest. Yeah. And so we were able, so he kind of had this playful naughtiness about him. Um, so it was fun to put him in front of all these bushes that he could climb and play and uh -huh. creep out of. Um, and then uh, Eve had a piece on that had all these bright, beautiful blues mm -hmm. and with a little splash of bright colorness and playful buttons. Um, so we found it just almost a beautiful wall just just brought the blues out even more. Right. Um, and so, and then it's just the colors with the clothes and her hair and the background, it just made just almost dreamy for me. I mean, it was sporty and, and right. sassy, but it was very dreamlike at the same time. Oh, wow. uh, and then Rebecca, she had basically from head to toe all lace. And in fact, wow. I found these goggles that even had the sides had lace on them. So she had this, the lace goggles, the lace jacket, this lace tube top, um, and it just, but I, the way I blended it, it was, it was dreamy and romantic, but it had, with the goggles and the, kind of her, the background was just 
metal door, it just had a, a contrast between romantic and street. And it just created this, um, oh, she looked amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. I mean, I can't. I would like to say that. Oh, that was my favorite. But then I like, no, that other one was my yeah. favorite. It just yeah. every shot was, right. every scene that we created was fantastic. Wow. I had a really good time. A good time. Right. And last but not least, we had the third location that we had the different vision, a different feel. So go ahead and check it out. There you go, perfect. Casting set. And just from speaking with you and just having you go over what you guys did this past weekend in the different shoots, you can tell you are really passionate about what you do because it's almost like you're envisioning and, and you can see the clothes, you can see the designs, and it, it creates a certain feeling. And so you, I mean, I can tell you're very passionate about what you do, which is always good, <laughs> always good. You, I think you have to have the passion to to become a fashion designer and actually stay within the industry and produce great stuff. So, I mean, I, I can just feel it from you as you're talking about it. I mean, that, that's great. It sounded like a great shoot, and we're going to put up a lot of pictures of it so people can kind of see what you mean when you're awesome. talking about the different things. Yeah. But, you know, you said that 
you're, you went back as a child and this kind of followed you and, and trailed you. And so, I mean, where do you see the future of where you're going? Um, my goal for Sutter Larkin is mm -hmm. to get as much exposure, try to get as much um, recognition, you know, people to start recognizing the name. Mm -hmm. And then once the name is established, I'd like the association behind it, it to be, it's all about individuality mm -hmm. and, and a, a, a healthy person, a person that loves themselves and loves their individuality and cel celebrates it. Right. And so that's ideally I would love to have when people say Sutter Larkin, oh, that's about an individual that loves themselves. Right. And that's the overall goal is to see if I can help people out that way. Wow. And do you take the feels of San Francisco and, and uh, you know, kind of use that within your designs? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think There's about so it. Much within the city, it's hard not to. Yeah. It's it's definitely hard not to utilize the the beautiful location and just that that feel that San Fr San Francisco has and the variety of people and use that to kind of inspire you. So. Oh, I'm constantly taking my phone out and taking snapshots of yeah. things that you know that just I find curious, I find interesting, and inspire. You know. And my phone is like, I think, 70% full of photos. Yeah. And it's just from walking through the city and say, oh, I like that click, you yeah. know? And then at the end of the day, I just go through it and then all these imageries get stirred up and then I sit down and I create. So what are the projects that you're working on now? What's, what's upcoming? <laughs> <laughs> that laugh must be something. <laughs> <laughs> it's Burning Man time. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's um, right now all my, all, all my customers are people who are going to Burning Man who mm -hmm. would love to have something that's completely unique, expressive, functional. Because mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's like a lot of the pieces I'm making, because it does get cold at night, it is to keep them warm. Right. Uh, but I'm, I, right now it's all custom work and wow. very expressive and it's very fun yeah it's just it's i um am really enjoying the creativity and then handing it over to the person and seeing their reaction right I, that's the first thing i do when i hand right. over design as i look at their face because uh -huh. i can't hide right <laughs> <laughs> and to see them right now it just, it's i've been working really hard this mm -hmm. whole month and now i'm handing over the the, the art oh, and wow. see and, and so it's just been really rewarding oh that's good so that's so that's been this month. You've been actually working on everything that's the, the custom work. Yeah, right? yeah. And oh, so wow. the shoot on uh -huh. Sunday actually has of two or three of those pieces. That oh, wow. the the green dress with all the flowers is actually um, a friend of mine. She commissioned me to do that. Okay. Um, oh gosh. And then actually uh, the green suit that Andrew is wearing, he actually commissioned me to do that piece for him. Oh. And I'm like, well, will you model it too? <laughs> And did he model it? Yeah, yeah, he's oh, okay. yeah. So the guy, the guy model, uh -huh. two of the pieces that he's wearing are actually his. That he commissioned me to do as well. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. That that were in the shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah the there was a, well, the, all there's been a, tons of customs, but right. the, in the shoot, those were some of the custom ones. Oh wow! Yeah. For somebody who is trying to get into the fashion industry, what would you say? What would be some of your advice to that person? Um, now that you're no, know, know that you want it and um, go into it knowing it's not going to be easy, but and it's going to be hard, but it will be the hardest thing you've ever done, and it'll be the most rewarding thing you've ever done, right? If you just go into saying, This is what I want to do, and I will accept. The fact that everything will not go my way, and there's going to be days that are going to be really, really hard. But if you get through those good or get the bad days in the past, mm -hmm. you'll get to the good days, and those good days are amazing. Yeah. But you just have to want it. You just really—it just can't be like, oh, I think I want to design clothes. Right. You really have to want it. Right. And it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we had a great evening. Carrie Asby again, please remember the name, Carrie Asby, and remember her company name, Sutter Larkin. Look for it. All you guys, all you guys back there that are watching this, you guys saw the videos, you guys have seen her creative designs. It's no joke. She's very unique, very passionate about what she does. And we definitely want you guys to remember the name Carrie Asby and her company name Sutter Larkin from San Francisco. Mm -hmm.
thank you so much again for coming out and, and just sharing with us some of what you do and, and you know the passion that you have for fashion design. It's been great you know, speaking with you tonight. It's been great to be here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much at home for watching today's Glamour World. We also want to thank you know, the crew and the staff here at Vacaville Public Access TV for allowing us to come into their studio. I'm your host, Ali B. This is your guest, or our special guest, who's more like family now. I feel like you're a close friend now. We've had so much fun. Absolutely. Carrie Asby, and I mean, we've had a great time, and hopefully you guys had a great time watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.